My name is David Warner and I'm an anesthesiologist here at Mayo Clinic Rochester. I'm going to be briefly describing our study titled Attitudes, Beliefs and Practices Regarding Electronic Nicotine Delivery Systems in Patients Scheduled for Elective Surgery that will appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I think many people have heard about these devices which are also known as electronic cigarettes. There are many actual controversies surrounding this area. We're not sure yet from an overall public health standpoint whether these will turn out to be a good or a bad thing as they're more and more promoted by tobacco companies and by others. It's certainly true that electronic cigarettes are probably safer than conventional tobacco cigarettes and that if everyone was able to switch from conventional cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, it would probably improve overall health. But it's not clear that that's what would actually happen. Um, some people are concerned, for example, that these devices could be used to allow current smokers to actually maintain their smoking habit by letting them get nicotine in situations where they're otherwise not allowed to smoke. Because of the potential for harm reduction, though, we became interested in their use as potentially helping surgical patients who are scheduled for elective surgery. Now, smoking, as it turns out, is a risk factor for several complications like wound-related healing problems, pneumonia, and cardiac complications in patients who are undergoing surgery. And it's true that if you are able to eliminate your smoking around the time of surgery, you will reduce your surgical risk. And we've been engaged in a wide variety of means to help people do that. Some people, though, just find it very difficult. And so we were wondering whether people would be interested in perhaps using electronic cigarettes around the time of surgery to try to cut down or eliminate their use of conventional tobacco cigarettes and thus reduce their risk for having these complications during surgery. So we did a relatively simple survey of patients who were coming through our preoperative evaluation clinic to see if they would had experience with electronic cigarettes and if they would be interested in exploring the use of these devices to help cut down or, reduce or eliminate their smoking around the time of surgery. And the bottom line with the survey is yes, they are. A surprising number of, of patients uh, actually had already tried electronic cigarettes and uh, even among those who hadn't, uh, the majority were interested in using them to modify their smoking behavior around the time of surgery. Now it was interesting, the people who were most interested in this weren't necessarily the same people who were the most worried about how smoking affected their surgery. Uh, in fact, the, the only thing that we found that really predicted whether patients were interested or not was whether they had tried these products before or not. So based on the results of this survey, we're actually going to pursue uh, another pilot study to see if when we give patients electronic cigarettes before their elective operations, whether they in fact will use them to cut down or eliminate their smoking. We're still a long way from being able to really recommend this approach uh, in patients who are facing surgery, but we do think that there's enough suggestion that this may be a good thing that it's worth at least pursuing because smoking is a real risk factor for many of these complications. And if there's anything that we can do to help protect our patients who smoke from this risk, we should pursue it. It may also be that this would be a good time to help patients think about quitting for good. And uh, electronic cigarettes may be a means to do so. Although again, just like in um, other settings where people have thought about this, it's not at all clear whether these devices really are an effective way to help people cut down or eliminate their smoking or not. But again, we think that there's enough promise in this approach that uh, we want to continue to pursue it. Thanks very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.